thank you for hosting us here at Trilos. Uh, I'm Matthijs, and this is Tom. Hi. And together with Tom, I run an indie company called Nonstrict. We create apps for macOS, VisionOS, whatever, whatever Apple platform we feel like making an app. Uh, and uh, I think the best running, most famous app right now is uh, de well, depends on the market probably, but is uh, Bezel over here that can mirror your iPhone. You create uh, a Vision OS app split screen that creates an extra virtual display of your Mac inside Vision OS. Uh, we do that together with uh, Jordi Bryan. Uh, and we also do other random stuff like writing blogs about technical stuff on our website. And we're currently also working on a not yet released uh, SDK to do uh, screen recording, camera recording, all kinds of recording uh, on macOS in Swift and Electron apps. Uh, so that's, that's the stuff that we work on. Uh, and first, I was wondering how many of you uh, did already see a vision device for real before today? <laughs> okay, quite some. Nice. And how many also did actually try them on and have to experience them? Okay, that's already <laughs> a little bit less. Um, and how many people did try develop developing for Vision OS? Running something in a simulator, creating an app? Okay, cool. Anyone watched WWDC videos about it? Not developing stuff, but... Okay, yeah, cool, nice. So quite some interest, but not too much people uh, uh, having had their, their hands on them. Um, I think we, Tom and I were really excited when Apple announced uh, uh, the Vision Pro uh, at the, the DC uh, at 23. Um, we were working on Bezel already uh, for quite a while. Um, oh, my Mac is already uh, going to sleep. Uh, and Bezel uh, uh, is mirroring your iPhone on your Mac. I don't know where I've, I, I wanted to demo it, but I left my cable somewhere over there. So I think I skipped the demo. It's mirroring your iPhone on the, uh, on the Mac. That app was already uh, doing pretty well. And we were thinking, well, maybe that's, that's something that we could bring into Vision OS. Uh, mirror your, your iPhone inside the virtual environment. But I think one thing that's very hard about such a new device is that, that you don't really know how, how it feels when you when you use it. Um, I really had the same w when the Retina display came out for the iPhone. It sounded really cool when, when it was presented on stage, but it was like, yeah, okay, it sounds good, but I have no idea, idea how it feels or, or what it looks like. Uh, and once I had it in my hands, it was like, oh, okay, I, I never want to go back. And the vision was a little bit of the same. So we had a lot of concepts and ideas, like we could, we could create this and it would be really cool to be on a, uh, on a new app store on day one, but with what app? So Bezel was one of the ideas that we had. We submitted it to Apple um, to go to one of their developer labs in London. Uh, we were invited, we actually went there, and that was the moment that it really clicked, like, okay, what, what's this device uh, going to do for me? What's working well? What's working not so well? Where are problems that we maybe can solve with our apps? So that was a very uh, interesting moment, I think. Uh, and I hope with demoing, uh, the vision today and walking through some features of, of the Vision Pro and Vision OS uh, that we can also show where the, where the pain points, what are the, what are the strong points of Vision OS, how does, working, how, how does it work to develop an app for Vision OS, uh, and maybe give you some ideas uh, what you can do and what you can build. Uh, so I think that's an, uh, an interesting thing to do. Um, Let's see. So maybe we we'll just switch to the to the headset, Tom. If you if you can put it on. So I think one, what I found very interesting at the lab was also that the first instruction was also not to pick it up like this because this is a magnetic thing that just comes off. So if ever <laughs> someone hands you a vision, don't take it by the soft uh, thing, but but take it like by the front and by the back. That's that's uh, the solid parts uh, that you can use. Uh, the vision is a, a pretty 
hefty device uh, when you put it on, and I think that's something that I can really uh, still improve uh, on the vision. Yeah, okay, so here we have a mirror. So one thing that the vision does is it, it only renders sharp where you look. And when you have the vision on, that's not something you will notice. But when Tom is demoing and we're looking at the mirror, we're going to focus on other points than where Tom is looking. Uh, so it will look blurry. But that's not something you will see when you have the vision actually on your head. So that's a thing that's good to, uh, to realize. Uh, I think if you've seen any video from Apple, uh, then you've seen the pass-through. The pass-through is pretty good, it's pretty high quality, but as soon as you're in low light conditions like here, then it will feel a bit grainy. And if you have look at other screens, uh, the screens won't look as pretty as normally. I don't know, if you look at your laptop, then probably will also see that it's not super readable. Uh, so that's something that's uh, uh, that's a bit hard. <laughs> nice. So Vision OS also has just an, uh, a home screen, like every other Apple device. Even your Mac has a, a launcher uh, that I never use, but but it's there. Uh, and you can just launch apps from here. Uh, look at it with your eyes, tap it with your fingers, uh, yeah. and an app will launch. Uh, it really feels like the first impression I had in, in London was uh, it felt like uh, uh, using an iPad, basically. Uh, it's our, the iPads app, iPad apps are floating in space. Uh, that's the first thing that you will notice. So this is the settings app. Settings app looks really familiar, I think. Uh, you just use it like any other Apple settings app. So that's, uh, that's pretty easy to use. Safari is another interesting uh, app that's basically Safari, but then floating in space. <laughs> uh, but they do nice tricks like this, so if you uh, uh, look at all the tabs that are open, they can expand into space. And that's one of the in most interesting things that Vision has, that it's all around you. You can just uh, use all, the spa all that space as an, as an app or as a user uh, and place windows uh, around you. Uh, that really, really is convenient to do. Uh, personally, when I use the Vision, uh, and I'm seated, so when I use it for work, etc., uh, then I do feel uh, it is, you can have three windows next to each other, but then it becomes inconvenient to just turn around. Uh, so then uh, there, there is a still a limit in how many windows you can have open, and the windows are pretty big. Uh, and window management is also uh, a bit hard. So as soon as if you have multiple windows and they start to overlap, now you have to actually look at the window behind that other window to get it back to the front. So th there are still weird things, and I think Apple is improving rapidly already in Vision OS uh, to improve, uh, improve upon that. Uh, one of the coolest things that Vision can do uh, is show 3D models. And it's really hard to demo this, because we're still looking at this flat screen over here, uh, and it will look way different than than Tom is experiencing inside. But if he opens a USDC file, let me move over here that I'm not constantly in the shop. Uh, then this really feels like that object is actually over there. Uh, you can walk around it, you can, you can tap the little dots to get more information, it's animating. Uh, and what Vision Pro is also doing is it's looking at the, the light of the room and applying that light to that, that model. So it really feels like the model is actually there. If there's uh, a lot of sunlight coming in, it will, it will look different uh, than it's doing now. So that's a really interesting uh, uh, experience. Uh, and this also was one of the things that I really felt was something that I'd never experienced, that you can place an object inside the real world and that it feels like it's actually there and that you can actually use it. Um, that's just a really interesting experience. It's, uh, it also feels uh, hard to work with as a developer. Like It feels like, okay, now I need to have all kinds of uh, 3D skills, but I think that Vision Pro does a pretty good job of making this easy for you. We can look at some code samples later um, to show how it works. You can also blow them up pretty, pretty large. <laughs> so that's... Uh, uh, 
That's pretty nice. Yeah, so that, that are, I, I think that was one of the uh, experiences that we had that we were like, okay, 3D objects, that's something that's really interesting to, to have in, uh, in a vision app. So uh, working on Bezel, I was like, okay, if we can have a 3D model of an iPhone in there, then it will look really realistic with all the rendering that uh, iOS uh, or VisionOS does for us. So that's an app that we created. Uh, well, you have all the, the 3D power that I was already talking about, but the, the normal uh, screens that you have uh, are simply SwiftUI or UIKit uh, views. So if you're already used to creating a Mac or a, a, an iPhone app, uh, it's really convenient and easy to create those UIs. It's just the same uh, paradigms that you're used to that you can use. Uh, so basically everything you see in our app is just 2D SwiftUI code. The only 3D model thing is a 2D model that we bought on the internet and didn't create ourselves <laughs> to have an, uh, have an actual iPhone here. So you can now uh, look at the side, a little bit of the, at the side of the iPhone uh, uh, and see that it actually has depth. Uh, and it also has a little bit of a reflection uh, on the side. Uh, and that makes it re feel really, uh, really interesting and really special. And you see there's a, a, like a glass panel on the back. So it's actually on a 2D, the, the 3D iPhone is on the top of a 2D window. So what you can do if you have a, a normal SwiftUI view is you can just add a 3D model like it's a normal view uh, in your app and then uh, Switch UI and uh, Vision OS will do the rest for you. They will do all the fancy rendering, make sure it actually comes out of the view uh, and is rendered uh, properly. Uh, so th uh, that's actually pretty cool that you can make those super realistic uh, feeling uh, so views. Well, I mean yeah, so it's a lot of normal uh, app work. Uh, and what we did is position this uh, uh, the screen of the, the iPhone, uh, position that in a Z stack and pull it forward a little bit so that's a, it's the right depth. Uh, but but th that's basically it, and a lot of clipping to make sure that <laughs> a lot of the view is sticking out of the 3D model. Uh, but that's, that's basically it. Uh, so, yeah, those are pretty cool things that, uh, uh, that you can do. Um, one of the other things that we uh, uh, pretty soon noticed when using uh, Vision Pro is that uh, a lot of other Apple stuff can connect to it, like phones, laptops, etc. But if you don't do that, then just use the Vision Pro mm -hmm. and you have to type, for example, you go to Safari and you want to go to the Verge or something or some other website. Uh, then you get this uh, keyboard floating in the air. You probably have seen this also in some demos. Uh, and that's pretty inconvenient to type on. <laughs> so typing a URL is already, well, okay, now uh, you can manage, but I'm always making typos also. Uh, and you have to touch in air and you don't really feel the feedback. You have audio feedback, you hear ticks, but this is not so uh, convenient. So you, you can actually pair a Bluetooth keyboard, for example, or uh, if you, uh, use your uh, Mac and have that mirrored into the vision, then you can also use your Mac keyboard to type into Vision OS app uh, fields. Uh, but yeah, this, this is really not an ideal uh, solution. Uh, so that's also something we created an app for uh, to say, well, okay, you have this, this device in your pocket that you've always with you. Why can't you type with your iPhone? like the Apple TV remote app that's also helping you to type on Apple TV. Uh, so we created an app called Typos. Uh, that's actually on the App Store, if you can find it. I don't know why there are no, no results. Maybe the mock server is still running. <laughs> Typos. <laughs> Giving, <laughs> yeah, just try to refresh. I think the third uh, goal, yeah. On the keyboard? One finger. Uh, you, 
No, you can type with two fingers. If you will type with five fingers, it won't work. But you can you type can with two use fingers. Your, uh, <laughs> index that's fingers. Yeah, and use your index fingers. So that that will work. That's I think the. What you can also do is uh, look at the keys and uh, tap. Yeah, and tap in the air. So I can look at each key individual. Oh. And that, that also works Some, uh, quicker sometimes than tapping. Depends how uh, familiar yeah. you are with looking at specific small items. So one thing when you do UI designing in VisionOS apps that you need to be aware of is that everything in VisionOS is a little bit bigger. So I think the, the recommended size on iOS was, what was it? For 44, 44 pixels for VisionOS, they sized it up a little bit to, I don't know the exact number, but 60, 60 or something, yeah. So that, that the minimum size for things is bigger. There also always is more space between items because you have to focus with your eyes. So if you look at something and it's too close, then for your eyes it will blur together. And for the vision engine, it's not clear what item you're looking at. And then the focus will go up and down to the different items. Um, so th those are design things to, to notice. So one app we made is a, a typer. So Tom is now typing on his iPhone. And we're using the networking APIs from Apple to find the other device and then just send over the string that he's typing uh, and uh, render it over there. And what's pretty nice is that this is just a simple Swift UI view uh, with a state binding. So that the new string is coming in. We push that into the state. It's rendered over there. Uh, and then we typed dot, dot draggable on it. And if you type something, then you can pick it up. You have to do that carefully. Yeah. <laughs> and then you can uh, let it go in a, in a text field, and then it's there. And th I think that's pretty nice because Draggable is also something that you can support in your iPad app or on Mac, for example. And those Swift UI patterns that you learn on other platforms are also things that you can uh, apply here. Uh, so that's, that's pretty nice and convenient. Uh, we also created a copy button that you can just copy and then paste somewhere uh, <laughs> with a nice sound effect. <laughs> uh, so those are also things that uh, work pretty pretty well and pretty easy. Uh, so that's fun. And I think what's really fun uh, for such a new platform as Vision OS is that uh, a lot of stuff has rough edges. A lot of There's a lot of stuff that you can't do. It really reminds me of the first iPhone, and you couldn't copy paste stuff, mm -hmm. etc. So everybody is thinking of smart utility apps, little novel things, confetti cannons, uh, yeah. stuff like that, because <laughs> it just looks really cool. Uh, when you, you're just now walking inside a big blast of, of confetti. Uh, a lot of that stuff is really fun uh, to do. It's like the beer drinking apps uh, on the iPhone in the early days. Uh, <laughs> so that's also stuff that, that goes around and people are, are playing with it. Uh, people are buying those apps for a few dollars. Uh, so that's fun to do. So if you have an idea for vision, uh, I would really encourage you to just try it out and, and put it out there because the store also is small. People are looking for, for fun things. Just, just try stuff and uh, see what sticks. Nobody knows what, what's working. I think that's a big difference between developing for iPhone. iPhone has now been around for years. There are established patterns. We know how we should solve certain things. Uh, but those patterns that we now have on iOS were invented and evolved in the early days. Like pull to refresh was something that was invented also by app developers and then adopted by everybody. Uh, and now it's a standard thing. Uh, and those things are now being invented on, uh, on Vision OS. And you can be part of that, of the trying out, playing around, and figuring out new stuff. So this is a panorama picture uh, that Tom is looking at. Uh, it really curves around you and, and looks really nice. Uh, you can really be, and that's something, of course, of a VR headset. You can really be inside uh, things instead of only look at them on a small screen. Um, uh, so that's that's a pretty interesting and uh, fun thing to do. Uh, it's also not only uh, native technology uh, that you can use to develop stuff like this. Uh, Unity developers are also 
uh, deploying their apps on here, but you can also use WebTech. Uh, so there's WebXR, the, which is an open standard that's also supported by Safari. Uh, and you can choose, uh, this is a demo site with uh, a dozen of demos of WebXR stuff. Uh, and that's all, you can also just launch that. You have to confirm with the pop-up that's okay uh, for the website to track your hands and take over your environment. Uh, and this is just only web technology that's now taken over the full uh, vision experience. So Tom can't see us now. So stay still, don't bump into my laptop, please. Uh, and it's also tracking your hands. Uh, yeah, so now, Tom, that's also interesting if you go close to objects and when you start walking, when you're fully immersed, then it will break the immersion to basically keep you safe. Um, so this is also uh, pretty cool and, and pretty interesting that you can use technologies like this and experiences like this to um, uh, try stuff out or maybe other experience, experiments that you find on the internet uh, is stuff that you can use. Uh, I think one, one of the demos Apple gave to uh, this journalist in the early days was a, a butterfly and a, a dinosaur demo. That's also a, a pretty good and cool demo if you uh, happen to try vision, uh, look at that video, it's, it's really impressive. Um, and it's also cool to, uh, uh, to see that the butterfly actually fly in the, uh, in the room. Uh, I think another example, a good example of 3D, 3D objects is also jig space. Maybe you can launch a, a, a nice jig with a jet engine or something. Uh, that's also a really cool thing, uh, if you, uh, you can now place a 3D object, and in this app, you can just pull the whole thing, uh, whole thing apart, and look at the, the jet engine, how stuff works, <laughs> what it does, uh, get uh, explanations, etc. Uh, and it, you really feel the uh, there is really depth and you can walk around it and that's also a, a really interesting uh, experience. Maybe if you tried something like a quest and you you can also have experienced something like it, but I think the quality in the vision is pretty uh, pretty high and pretty uh, interesting. Uh, so that this, are also this one's uh, more useful in case you need yeah. to build the <laughs> Also a bit more boring. Standing <laughs> desk. <laughs> you can figure out how to do this. Yeah, you have a this standing desk instruction. This is way better than a fold-up paper uh, instruction set. Yeah, exactly. But also what's really weird is that other people are just walking right through your 2D objects when you have them on. And <laughs> they're not really respectful of anything that you, uh, uh, that you use. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, what I wanted to mention is that something you also can't really see in the demo, but the, the audio is also really good and also uh, spatially positioned. So you really can hear where things come from. So if you place an app uh, to the right of you, you really will hear the sound of that app coming from that position. Uh, and that also really helps to orient yourself. Uh, you can also put on an environment uh, to close yourself off. Uh, that's also really neat, especially if you're in low light conditions and the pass-through goes a bit grainy. So then it helps to, uh, to put, on, put on an uh, environment. So Switch Splash is one of the uh, demo apps from, uh, uh, from Apple. The, the source can just be downloaded. You can just look at uh, how it's built. There's a lot of Switch UI code with some 3D models. Uh, it's really fun to do. You can buy a, uh, build a water slide uh, for a, a fish that's in that bowl. And then actually uh, let the fish slide through the, through the water slide. So those are pretty fun uh, 3D things. And I think the interesting thing here is that Apple has created quite some of those examples who, uh, which are pretty interesting to look at. Uh, because it, to me, it felt pretty daunting, like, okay, it's all 3D and it feels really game, game developer style. But if you look into the source of those uh, apps, I think it's really doable. You, you would have to have a, a 3D modeler or something uh, next to you, but uh, the coding is uh, uh, pretty doable for uh, any iOS dev, I, I think. Um, 
And I think one very useful thing uh, that a lot of uh, uh, a lot of people will use is uh, mirroring your uh, uh, your Mac uh, into uh, the vision. So, what should happen if you look at your Mac is that a button will appear that says connect. That's not al always working. <laughs> I think your laptop is under an angle, Tom. Maybe look at my laptop, then it probably will think that's your laptop. No, not working. Nope. So you can luckily also pull it up by uh, control center. So control center is always hovering uh, on top over there. So if you look up, then uh, a little dot will appear, and you can open control center and also do things like start mirroring, etc. Um, so this is Mac uh, uh, virtual display. Uh, so the screen of the laptop is now turned off. Uh, and the screen is only visible inside Vision. Uh, and it's pretty, a pretty convenient way to, to work with your Mac. So if you develop a Vision OS app, then this is my preferred way of working, uh, mirroring a Mac virtual display, and then uh, uh, having the app on the side and uh, building and running it so that you can actually test it in the device. It's also pretty doable. So uh, the first app, like Bezel, we fully built in a simulator. Uh, we have we had one day in a lab to try some stuff out, but that was it. Other than that, fully built in the in the simulator. That's really doable, uh, except for moving around. And I don't know if you tried the simulator, but if you have to move around and click on stuff, that's really inconvenient. So my recommendation is to uh, connect a game controller, like a PlayStation controller or something, to your Mac, because then you can use the game controller to move around, just like in a game, uh, and then click around with uh, with your mouse. That makes it way easier to develop in the, uh, in the simulator. Uh, and that's pretty doable. Uh, the only thing that you won't catch in the simulator are the weird bugs that you only have on the device. And those are still there because it's a first gen device. Uh, so that's the, uh, that's the harder stuff. Uh, but Bezel is also an app that we created uh, in the simulator. And it works pretty well, except that the screen sometimes turned black for some unknown reason that only happened in the device uh, that we had to troubleshoot. Um, so here is some uh, code. Is, it, uh, is this the Splash? Uh, this is the Hello World app. Oh, the Hello World app. Oh, yeah. So there's also a Hello World app, uh, which shows stuff about the solar system and planet Earth, uh, a little informational app with also 3D uh, items. Uh, and what's pretty interesting is that, that this code is actually pretty boring, so to speak. So it's just uh, a Swift app. The World app is an, a Swift app. We have uh, a scene. If you've done a Swift UI app before, then you've seen this. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that you will notice is that there are multiple window groups, uh, and there is an immersive space uh, over here. Uh, and that's something that's used a lot in Vision. So it's convenient to open multiple windows, like on your Mac. Um, and the immersive space is a special kind of scene that you can turn on and then will take over uh, everything else. Uh, so uh, then it will push away all the other apps. You can choose if it should also occlude everything, so it should really, really be like you're on the moon, or that it just pushes away all the other windows, and then your app can use all the space around you. Um, but within those views, you just use navigation stacks, Z stacks, because Z stacks now actually have depth. It's not only what's on top, but also you can also push something uh, to be more in front or more uh, to the back. Uh, v stacks, H stacks, uh, animations, it's all working like you would expect in, uh, uh, in a Swift UI app. Uh, so that's actually pretty great, because it makes it really easy to build the app, and then focus on the actual experience that you want to deliver and try stuff that you can do. Uh, so one of the things that you wouldn't really do maybe in an, in an iPad app is add a 3D model. Um, so that's maybe interesting to, to show. So the thing to the right, I think the, yeah, so here we have a, a 3D model uh, of Earth. Uh, you can walk around it, look at it. You can, uh, with the uh, little buttons on the bottom there, uh, you can also make it turn around, change the tilt. 
that stuff that you can do with this. But if you want to add this 3D model uh, to the uh, view, then that's pretty easy to do. So maybe, Tom, you can, this is a, a 3D satellite on top of a 2D window. Uh, so there is a, another new Swift UI view called Model 3D. And you can use Model 3D uh, to add 3D models uh, to your views. And it's a lot like uh, loading an image. Uh, so you tell the thing uh, where to load it from your bundle, what's it named and what bundle it should lo be loaded from. And then once it's loaded, it passes it in here and you uh, build a view that the model should, should have. And it's also async, so you also have a placeholder because it needs to load. It has to load uh, the 2D model, the textures, etc. do the rendering. And once it's ready to show itself, then it will call that uh, closure and that callback, and then you can uh, put it in the view. One of the things that uh, a UI element that's special to uh, Vision OS is the ornament. Those are the little small uh, buttons that we saw at the bottom of that uh, planet Earth. Uh, so the, the bottom controls here, that's called an ornament. And that's something that you can also add to your, to your views. They are used instead of uh, a where you would use a tab bar, for example, on iOS. Uh, then they're often to the, to the left. For, for example, the Photos app uh, uses that here. Uh, and you can, uh, and at the bottom, that's also an, an ornament. The ornaments are pulled a little bit to the front and a little bit outside of the app, so that you have more room for the content to show. Uh, anyway, they really feel like, they feel like a part of the app, but also like separate controls. Uh, so for example, music also uses an ornament at the bottom to show the, uh, what's playing right now and the controls for the player over there. An ornament is also so something that you can add to your app uh, pretty easily. Uh, so you have a view modifier uh, dot ornament. Do we have that here in the app? I don't know. <laughs> Should be somewhere probably. You can uh, type dot ornament and then position it at either s the, so the left or the right side or the bottom side. And then uh, just add UI also uh, in there. Uh, that's a, a pretty easy thing to do also. Uh, so that's uh, uh, pretty nice to add stuff like that in your uh, your Vision OS app. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was doing something else. <laughs> you were saying? Um, so, let's see. I think one of the uh, uh, the things that also so I think it's also great if you already have an iOS or an iPadOS app, um, uh, then it also can be launched on uh, Vision OS. You can just start any iPad app. Apple didn't port all the apps yet. For example, the calendar app is just the iPad app right now, and there's not really a Vision OS app yet. Uh, they feel a bit intrusive, I would say, because they're you see that a lot of vision windows have those glass background and the, the environment shines through. Uh, but iPad apps are always have a white background, so they feel really solid, like a little bit of a wall that you place in the, uh, in the room. Uh, and they have another problem, like the buttons are often really close together. So Books is also an example where it's just the iPad app. And actually, all those buttons on the left side of the view are a little bit clo too close together. So if you try to focus on them and tap, then often when I actually use that, I have the problem that I tap on the wrong button and I have to try again. Uh, what I do myself is pull, often pull the apps really close and then just touch. Because it's made for touch. <laughs> so that, that's working pretty OK. And uh, you see also the edit button on top is way too close to the, to the edge. That looks really weird. Um, there are good WWDC talks about converting your iPad app to Vision OS and, and what you can do to uh, uh, add the Vision OS target and, uh, uh, and support it. So that's uh, uh, something that's, that I would really recommend if you want Vision OS users to use your app, is convert them. You will also be more visible in the Vision OS store. 
and it doesn't have to be too much work to uh, to do that. I think that those are already are a lot of stuff that you can do and how VisionOS works. There's a lot more to tell, but I'm also really interested in if there are any specific questions or things that you're interested in that may we maybe we can zoom into or, or look at. Are there any questions? Here in the front? Yeah. <laughs> Did you already play with uh, hand gesture recognition? I didn't do that personally. Uh, so not, not in code. Uh, in the apps, hand, hand gestures and hand tracking is working pretty well. So what you saw in the uh, WebXR, or the, those little blocks that were uh, Tom's hands, if you do that yourself, it really feels like your hand. It's, it's pretty good. Do you, can you get that information, like in a big matrix or array? Yeah, so you can that get that information, but only if you go into an immersive space and push out all the other apps, and you have to ask permission. So the user gets a permission request, like would you allow to uh, allow hand tracking, and then you can do that. And then you need to make 3D gesture recognizers yourself, probably. Uh, yeah, you have to do a lot of yourself. Uh, but there, there is sample code out there that, okay. that can yeah. help with things. So, so if you have ideas, then... <laughs> um, can you get any information about your environment, surfaces, walls? No, basically, basically the answer is no. no. It's all really closed off. So also the camera feed of the real world, that's also something that's really protected. So that's really hard to... Basically, airplane like this that we're doing right now is nearly the only way to get that feed. Uh, also, getting info, so doing augmented reality yourself, uh, other than hand tracking, is really hard. You can get a service, so you can just ask the, uh, the vision, just get me a service so I can place something on it. And then it gets you a service, but you don't know where the service is, what it is, uh, only that it's horizontal or vertical. That's it. Uh, if you go into immersive mode again and take over the whole environment and ask for permission, then you get, can get some uh, more information, but it's really limited right now. And I feel that's one of the bigger limiting factors because I think there are a lot of cool augmented reality ideas that, that we could all implement, but it's just not possible right now. I hope they will open up uh, over time. Hi, uh, thank you for the demo. I was wondering, what are the accessibility learnings using this device? Um, yeah, that's an interesting question. I think, so in, is there a specific thing that you're thinking about? No, uh, not something specific, but I was just wondering, like, how does accessibility work in real life? Yeah, so there are quite some uh, accessibility features. I didn't try them a lot myself. We work together with something who's blind someone who's blind. And uh, uh, he told me that it's working for him pretty OK. Uh, so they, they did a lot of stuff. But then again, I think one of the, the things I appreciate most is like the 3D stuff, for example, that you just can't see. So there, it's a lot of visual stuff. So if you have a visual uh, uh, Disability, then it's really. I think it's really hard to get the best out of the device at this at this point in time. Uh, they also did a lot of stuff like if you can't use both of your hands, for example, Apple compensated for that, um, and stuff like VoiceOver, for example, uh, is like other apps. You implement it the same way as other apps. Woo. <laughs> Um, can you run UI tests? <laughs> can you run <laughs> UI tests? That's a great question. I didn't try. Uh, so I don't know. But I, I assume you can. I, wonder how it works. <laughs> I assume you can do stuff like that in the, uh, in the simulator also. So I, I think so, but I don't know. I have to say, as an indie, I don't write a lot of tests. How do you make <laughs> a UI <laughs> test? <laughs> Tom. You, didn't, uh, you didn't tick the box add test. Oh, is that a book? Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> Never write this. <tests. 
Hi. Um, I saw your panorama photos. Did you buy a 360-degree camera already to play around no. with for your immersive space? No. No, I didn't buy a 360 camera yet. But I did shoot some uh, 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 some videos with the, the vision. Uh, and those, you, if you stay still, that's I think that's the <laughs> condition. Because if you, if you stay still, then that video looks pretty great. Then you really have a feeling of depth, for example. Stuff like that is really working well. Apple also created some immersive uh, videos. Uh, those are in the Apple TV app. Those are all, uh, also pretty cool. There's, for example, a video of uh, a rhino uh, farm uh, with someone caring for the rhinos, and then they walk up really close, and you really feel like, okay, I have to, st I have to take a step <laughs> back because <laughs> this is not going okay. Uh, uh, so I think uh, it's not only the 360 part, but it's also shooting two uh, pictures for each eye one. That's really enhancing the experience. Mm. One more question. Uh, do you think Vision OS is built upon <coughs> iOS or more Mac OS? Because you have these all these multiple things, or iPad OS. Because um, y for your typos app on the Mac, you can inject your keys in the ty in the event yep. stream. Can you not do that? It's definitely iOS. Yeah, so you cannot do yeah. that. No, it's and it's behaving. So if you look at the little details or plug it into, uh, if you have a developer strap into your Mac, uh, and you see what it does, and you analyze a little bit, is it, what is it doing? That's exactly an, uh, an iOS device. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Final question. Do you use it f uh, the full day? and? like on a full working day, and do you feel more tired on the end of the day when you use it? Yes and yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I think it's uh, absolutely more more tiring. I think, so I did use it a lot because we also created split screen to create an extra virtual display, and I really wanted to test that, so then I take a full day and do my whole work day inside Vision. Uh, you really feel the device pushing on your head after like, I have, I really, well, get, Annoying feelings after six hours or so, so it's a pretty l yeah it's pretty long, but it's still well if you want to do the whole workday, it's uh, not long enough, and uh, I think it's really tiring, especially because my eyes have to focus harder on text, for example. It's less sharp than your uh, than an actual display of your Mac, for example. So after a day in Xcode, I really feel like okay, I have to focus on that letter to really see it well. Uh, and I, th I think that's also a, a hardware limitation. They really have to push more pix still more pixels in those displays to have enough pixels per uh, degree uh, that everything looks sharp. Because it's a 4K display right in front of your eye, but if you then have a 4K display over there, then it still has to share pixels. So that's, uh, that's hard. Um, thank you. Uh, it was an interesting demo of uh, the Vision OS. Uh, probably more people have more questions, but I think it's best to do that um, With a little bit of a beer. so that we can have <laughs> some drinks and uh, some, some snacks, I think, are also there. Uh, thanks for your time, and um, at the end of the evening, have a safe journey home, everybody.